Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Farah, and for this installment of the MMA Fix, we're at the X1075 studios here in Las Vegas with Chuck the Iceman Liddell. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Good to see you. You have a uh, book coming out. Actually, excuse it, me, the book is out it's now. It's out now, yeah. just came out. Let's uh, talk about it. Well, it just uh, covers me growing up and uh, going all the way through my fight career, going over through the fights and kind of the, everything in between, I guess. Give us kind of a sneak peek into uh, the book, like your youth and what it was like for you training coming up and becoming well, a professional fighter. It, was, uh, it goes through everything, you know, just start, start out, you know, doing my karate and, and wrestling and then how I kind of fell into fighting for a living, you know. Was, uh, when I was done wrestling, I was just kickboxing to keep competing and then, you know, while I was finishing up school, then I finished up school and decided, nah, I don't really want to get a job, so I'll keep fighting and then kind of fell into fighting in uh, the UFC. Did you have a tough youth? I mean, were you picked on a lot as a kid, or were you always pretty um, athletic and I, sort of tough? I, I was always pretty athletic and pretty tough. I mean, there was this thing I didn't cover in there about, you know, I, I was getting beat up a lot when I was really little. My mom told me I wasn't allowed to fight, and I took it as that and wouldn't fight back when people would fight me. And, and one of the teachers came to my mom and said, hey, you know, I like what you're doing, but, you know, you're going to have to learn to defend himself for these kids that keep, keep picking on her every day. And so she said, I can defend myself. And so my grandpa started teaching me how to fight, and I guess the rest was history. So. What was that moment, the welcome to being a professional fighter moment for you? It was in a one second that stands out in your mind where you realized, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my professional career. Um, you know, I don't know, because, uh, you know, there's time I, I knew I wanted to do it, but there was a time in there before I started doing uh, UFC that you know, we were starting to think, yeah, should I go get a real job, you know, am I kidding myself to sticking around doing, fighting and being a bartender, I mean, I do have a college degree, maybe I should get a better job, but luckily I made the right decision and stayed in fighting. What's one person that you've actually enjoyed giving a beating to? Well, I think that's an easy um, answer, uh, Tino. Yeah. Honestly, I, I actually will enjoy beating him up. What was the big falling out? Because didn't you guys used to be friends? Yeah, we, we used to train together. And look, part of it, most of it was just the fact that when it came time to, you know, it was always accepted sooner or later, you know, if we keep winning, you know, it's going to come time to, for us to fight. And, it, you know, he kind of pulled out of his edge of the bargain. You know, he, did, he knew I was going to beat him, so he didn't want to fight me. Well, right here on RawVegas.tv the other day, Tito Ortiz was walking a red carpet and kind of spoke out against the UFC, saying that the UFC wasn't taking care of him, and he uh, mentioned Randy Couture's name. What are your feelings on all of this with the UFC? I mean, are they taking good care of you? And uh, The UFC's been taking good care of me for a long time, and I, I think they took pretty good care of him, too, you know? Yeah. Uh, he just, uh, he never seems to be happy with whatever. Tito coming out and saying that didn't really surprise me, but Randy Couture getting fed up and speaking out was a bit of a surprise because he seems like a pretty low-key, even-tempered type of guy. Yeah, that, that whole thing was a little weird to me. I mean, it just seemed like, seemed like there, was, there had to be something more behind it you know, than, than was said. And, you know, I, there's a lot of business opportunities coming up now, and I think, I think Randy got, he's got someone to, uh, in his ear and trying to get him over to help do some other organization or something. But uh, it just seemed a little weird the way he went about it. You know, if he was unhappy with the money and all that stuff, you think he would have gone to, gone to the people first before he went to the, the public. What do you think about the pay scale? I mean, Tito bitches about the money. Randy was talking about money. Do you think that the money that UFC fighters are getting today is fair? I'm not complaining. I mean, it's been a, it's, I mean, a lot of these guys, I mean, I, I fought for a lot less. I never thought I'd make anything close to what I'm making now. Some, some guys complain a little more than they should. Let's talk about your training. How's that going? My training's, well, it was going great. I mean, it's been going great. I, I'm kind of on a book tour now, so I'm not yeah. doing a whole lot. So uh, doing a lot of getting up early and uh, going to sleep late. Chuck, tell us about the trademark Iceman haircut. Where did it come from and how did um, you get it? Actually, we were going to a Slayer concert. With the, some of our wrestling, bu wrestling buddies. That's and, how and every, every good story every, starts, by the way. Everybody was shaving their heads, and they, and they were like, come on, you got to shave your head. Well, I grew up with my head shaved. Um, that's just how my grandparents had me wear my hair. And I didn't want I'm not, there's no way. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll do a mohawk. And I said, all right. So we shaved my head in a mohawk. And uh, I, I liked it, so I kept it for a while. And then, uh, then I, you know, I ended up getting a tattoo on the side of my head. Right. And uh, I think I fought one. I had promoters. You know, I was kickboxing for a while, and I, like, I showed up to one one kickboxing match without my haircut. And, I co and the promoter was so pissed because <laughs> people, I really got, and that's when I kind of knew it was something that 
you know, let me stand out. You know, people didn't really, at that point, didn't know my name, but they knew what I looked like. Right. So they were, you know, they were looking forward, they, they looked forward to me coming out and fighting. And they liked me for the way I fought. I was a brawler and I'd come out, they knew there was going to be two guys swinging at each other the whole fight if I go out, if, they, if I showed up. And he's like, yeah, you come here and, and no one, and people thought you didn't fight that night because you, you didn't have your hair cut. This book tour is just one part of the busy life of Chuck Liddell. Does it wear on you at all? I mean, do, does all the distractions of being an international superstar uh, really sort of affect your training at all when you're getting ready for fights? Well, when I get ready for fights, we've gotten a lot better about just shutting everything down. We, you know, stay at home. I stay home and train, and um, ten weeks out, we won't. I won't travel anywhere pretty much unless it's something huge that they need me to do, but. They really have to have a big argument with my trainer to get me anywhere after, after, after within 10 weeks of the fight. So, Well, I'm looking forward to reading the book. It's called Iceman, My Fighting Life. You can get it at MMAJack.com. Chuck the Iceman Liddell, always a pleasure, my Thank friend. You. Thanks.